yesterday we were discussing control sources that is we do not know how to make control sources using electronic components that we will deal with in another course, but we know what their characteristics will be because uh, these control sources are not passive. Okay. It turns out that there are certain co semiconductor components like uh, transistors which can be made to look like active control sources in certain regions of their operation. Okay. Now, an amplifier is at the heart of every circuit whether it is analog or digital. The only issue is the basic amplifier or a basic control source you make using the transistor has a proportionality constant that is not very well controlled. Okay. Uh, this comes from first of all the very high sensitivity of a semiconductor material to temperature and also that these devices are all very physically very small. They are all fabricated together in identical environment, but still there can be small variations between uh, devices and also when you change the conditions let us say you fabricate a batch of devices today and another batch like 6 months later there will be some difference there will be some uh, uh, differences between them which have to be dealt with. Okay. Now, uh, what we want to make are amplifiers with well controlled proportionality constraints or well controlled gains. Okay. So, we were discussing how to do that and then we saw that okay, this is something we do all the time like uh, I took the analogy of driving. So, you can have a number of vehicles with highly variable or very, very different characteristics, but I think any of you will be reasonably able to drive it at any given speed quite accurately, right. And how, you do, how do you do that? What was the principle? Negative feedback, right. That is you have to somehow sense what the actual output is, that is the key, right. Once you sense what it is, then you compare it to the desired value and then uh, uh, and apply feedback, so that the error the difference between the actual output and the desired output gets smaller and smaller. Okay? So, that is negative feedback. Now, uh, this analogy is I mean as long as the vehicles are capable of reaching the speed that you want to reach, you will be able to get it to that speed okay, without any issues. Is this fine? The basic principles are okay. Uh, characteristics are variable, we can somehow obtain a well controlled characteristic using negative feedback. Okay. Now, what we have so far is only a sort of qualitative description of how to do things. You look at the uh, you look at the actual value compare it to the desired value and so on. Okay. Now, what we want to make is an electronic amplifier something that realizes V naught equals K times V i. Okay. So, let us imagine that somewhere in the circuit we have the output V naught and of course, somewhere we apply the input V i and we have to put something in here that is our job as designers. So, that this will be k times that. Okay. Now, just for uh, comparison let us have the automobile analogy. So, let us say this is the actual speed which is sensed by that I mean you have a speedometer and then you compare it to the desired speed right. What is the meaning of comparison? What do you actually do? you look at the difference between the desired and actual speeds. Okay. And then based on this, if uh, let me call this the error, if the error is positive, what do you do to the actual speed? Reduce it. The desired speed is more than the actual speed, what do you do? You have to increase it. If the error is positive, you go on increasing it, 
and if the error is negative, you go on decreasing it the way I have written it now. Now, that is ok, I mean this is a sort of verbal description. What we need is a more precise mathematical description of what they should be, ok. So, that will let you, I mean, some uh, let you understand the fundamental structure of every negative feedback circuit. There will be more details that we have to add later, but uh, this is the most basic negative feedback structure, ok. So, what should be in that box? What should it be? Yeah, what is that? What is the algorithm? No, no, I mean let us uh, go from the basics and try to figure out what that should be, ok. Error? No, I know, but uh, do not just say error correction, say how you correct it. If E is positive, that is right. So, what is a block that would do that? Huh? Add the error to the that is vaguely right, but remember all these are continuous in time, right. So, first of all, let us imagine that the desired speed is constant, ok. It is not that one second you are thinking that I would go at 50, next second at 55, and so on, ok. So, let us say that is constant. So, that means that the input is a constant, the output is whatever it is, ok, the actual speed. So, the way to figure out what it should be is imagine this right. So, let us say that is 50 and this is what we want to figure out what it is. actual speed is sensed and fed back like this, right. So, now <coughs> let us imagine that, so this is the error. So, how do we sense the actual speed using a speedometer, ok. Now, let us do an experiment. Let us imagine that the speedometer is stuck at some value, ok. See, normally what would happen is, so let us say there is uh, the actual speed is something, maybe you are at rest or you are going at 20 kilometers an hour, then the speedometer will sense that. So, the error is positive. So, you will go on increasing the actual speed. Okay, as the actual speed increases, what happens to the output here? That also increases and the error decreases and so on. So, to simplify this uh, situation, what I have, uh, so the error is actually changing with time, right. Even with a constant input, what happens is, as the actual speed is being controlled, the error will go on changing with time. So, that is a little more complicated uh, scenario to imagine. So, to simplify it, I have assumed that the speedometer is stuck, okay. Then what will be the error? I mean, let us say you have no awareness of the speed other than actually looking at the speedometer, ok. So, the error will be some constant. In this case, 10 kilometers an hour. So, the point is this is a constant. Error is a constant with time. Now, you imagine the scenario. So, the speedometer is stuck at 40 and you want to go to 50. What will you do? Huh? No, no, I mean what uh, just imagine the driving scenario, what will happen? Yes, you go on accelerating, right. So, what will be the behavior of the actual speed versus time? Huh? It will keep on increasing. Now, I will make an assumption, I will show it as a linear increase, ok. So, now why did I do all this? What is the purpose in doing all of this stuff? I want to figure out what this is, right. 
So, now I know that if the input is like this, the output will be like that. So, what should it be? What is a block that will do that? The input is constant with time, the output will go on increasing with time. It is an integrator, right. Now, I have assumed linearity. So, that let us keep that assumption, but this is exactly what will happen, right. And also, it is reasonable, like for instance, let us say the instead of getting stuck at 40 kilometers an hour, this is at 49 kilometers an hour, okay. It is stuck at 49, then the error will be constant at some smaller value 1, okay. So, assuming that you are a reasonable driver, what would you do? What would be the difference between these two scenarios? So, let us say in one case you see that the speedometer is showing 40, in the other case it is showing 49. What would be the difference in your, in what you would do? Huh? So, that is what you will do, right. If it is already close to 50, you will probably accelerate gently. I mean, whereas if you are far from 50, you will accelerate more strongly, more rapidly, right. So, the output to this, I mean, assuming some reasonable driver analogy will be like that. The speed will still increase, but rather more gently, okay. So, it looks like what we need there, I mean this is exactly how an integrator would behave, right. The input is being integrated, if the input is a smaller constant, the output will still be a ramp, but with a smaller slope. Is this okay? So, what we need for a negative feedback is an integrator. Okay, I will put some proportionality constant there to match the dimensions and so on. So, if you have this, it should be clear that when will it reach, I mean now forget the stuck speedometer and so on, everything is working properly. Okay. So, the input is a constant and you have an integrator, when will such a reach, uh, when will such a system reach steady state? The output should be a constant, what is the condition for that? The integrator input has to be 0, right. That is the only way the output will stop moving, right. If the integrator input is anything other than 0, the output will either go on increasing or go on decreasing. So, this will reach steady state only when this error is 0. This error is 0 means the sensed output is equal to the desired value, okay, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, this is uh, unrelated to how exactly it integrates and the value of alpha and so on, right. As long as you have an integration here, this will reach steady state when the error is 0, okay. Is this clear? Uh, what we need to implement a negative feedback system is an integrator, okay. So, you have, you drive the output using an integrator and the input to the integrator is some measure of the error, the difference between desired and actual values. And this is exactly what we have to use for our amplifier also. Of course, as we go on, we see that we cannot exactly realize the integrator and all that stuff, all that is detail, but for now this will work. I hope all of you are convinced that this system will reach steady state only when the integrator input is 0, okay. So, that that is basically this exactly mimics this business of constantly changing the output until the perceived error is 0, okay. So, this is how you do so many things, you do not actually know exactly how to set it. You constantly sense the difference between what you want and what you have, okay. So, let us say you are listening to music and you have some level of volume that is comfortable to you, okay. Normally, you would not know exactly where to set the knob to get that volume. You go on adjusting it until you, it becomes right, okay. So, there are so many things that you do uh, with this and that is what negative feedback is. Is this okay? Fine. Now, let us get back to our amplifier. I want to do the same thing now. So, first of all, A prototype negative feedback system is where compute the error that is desired minus actual and the actual value is sensed in some way, okay. There is some sensing arrangement. It may be explicit or implicit. In case of a vehicle, there is a speedometer, sleepy. So, what do I do next? What do I do with the error? Uh, 
I have been going on about this for the last 15 minutes, right? So, what do I do with the error to get the output? Yeah, so I integrate the error to drive the output. Okay, so that's the basic structure of a negative feedback system. So, whenever you try to control something with negative feedback, you have to find a suitable error that you can integrate and drive the output. And of course, the direction of integration should be such that the error goes down with time. If the error is positive, after a little bit of integration, it should reduce. Okay, it should become less positive. And similarly, if the error is negative, it should become less negative, so that the error eventually reaches zero. So now, how do we do this? This is what we want to implement. Usually, there is some mathematical expression that you want to implement, and from there, you have to extract a suitable error that can be integrated to drive the output. Okay. So, this part here, I know this is going to be some integrator. The question is, what do I feed to the integrator? What is the suitable error that I can feed? Hmm? Define, I mean, when the error goes to 0, this expression should be true, right. So, what is the error? What is the suitable error that I can use? The difference clearly, right? So, right? I can always rearrange any equation so that on the right hand side you get 0 and define that to be the error and somehow control things so that it goes to 0. So, now the error is the actual output I mean it can be the other way also right it can be k v i minus v naught as well it is exactly the same it does not matter ok. This is ok fine there is no k v i I mean obviously if we had k v i we would not go around building this right. So, obviously, we have to use v i the input quantity that is available and find the appropriate error. So, what should it be? Take just give me an expression for the error exactly that is all. So, I will use this form I I do not have k v i I have v i. So, all I do is I divide this by k. So, I get v i minus v naught by Okay. Now, this is an amplifier. So, I am assuming that k is going to be more than 1. If k is smaller than 1, there are other ways of uh, doing these things okay. and it is not particularly interesting. I think it is not I think all of you know how do you get a smaller voltage from a bigger voltage one of the ways of doing it a resistive divider okay, or any kind of impedance divider will do. So, now we are looking to make the voltage bigger. So, k is more than 1. So, what should I do here? First, I have to get V naught by k. How do I do that? How do I make a circuit that will give me V naught by k from V naught? Divider, just now I told you, I asked you, right? How do you get a smaller voltage from a bigger voltage? You use a voltage divider. So, this should be V naught by k, and that will happen if these resistors are in the ratio k minus 1. Okay. So, the upper resistor is k minus 1 times some r and lower resistor is r. r can be anything. Okay. Then, you subtract you get V i minus V naught by k and drive the integrator using that error. Okay. So, the error voltage is V i minus V naught by k. Is it okay? So, later we will see this business of taking the difference between 
the actual and sensed values. Some way of taking the difference between some two quantities and integrating it is an essential part of every negative feedback system and that is really what an op amp is. You may have heard of the op amp in some uh, uh, earlier labs or something. So, that is what it is. If not, we will learn what it is later. Okay. So, this is exactly what we will do. Is this fine? Now, of course, we have to go further down into the implementation details. We cannot just leave it as integrator. Everything clear up to this point? Any questions? Yeah. No, it is integrating. So, this is an indefinite integral, right? So, what it will do is the output will be whatever it is at let us say some t naught plus integral from t naught to t of whatever is the input. Okay. So, it is a running integration. So, as the time evolves, it gives you a new value. You understand? Yeah, you can take anything as beginning value. Uh, the integral should not be 0. What should be the output of the integrator? k times v naught, k times v i sorry. It will become k times v i regardless of where you start. Okay. So, let us say the input is 1 volt and k is 4, what should be the output? Huh? 4 volt. Okay. I mean by the way this needs a proportionality constant. What is the dimension of the proportionality constant? Voltage by time, no. 1 by time, it is frequency. Okay. So, I will call it omega u. Omega is usually used for frequency, the radiant frequency. So, it is omega u. The significance of that will become clear later. Okay. So now, the input is one volt. The output should be four volts. Okay. So let's say initially the input is zero. What happens? What will be the value of the error? What will be the value of the error just at t equal to 0? Huh? 1, 4. Why 4? The input is not 0, the input is 1 volt. The input is 1 volt, the output is initially 0. Okay. It is 1 volt and do not say 1, it is 1 volt. Okay. So, what happens to the output? Huh? It will start increasing. What will be the slope of increase? 1. Why? So, omega u volts per second. Okay. So, it will start increasing at with the slope of omega u. But of course, it does not go like this because the moment it increases to some value, what happens to this? That will also increase. What happens to the error? It will fall. Okay. So, the error will start from 1 and then it will fall off, it will eventually fall off to 0, whereas the output it will start ramping up at this rate, the rate of ramp up will slow, but it will eventually reach 4 volts. Okay. So, the output will change, it has to change and the output of the integrator in steady state will always be 4 volts. Now, if you start with let us say for some reason the output was initially 6 volts, what happens? What will be the error? This is known as the feedback voltage. What is the feedback voltage? 1.5 volts. So, what is the error? Minus half a volt. Okay. So, what happens to the output? It will start decreasing. What is the slope of decrease initially? Minus omega u by 2 volts per second. Of course, it is not going to stay that way. As the output decreases, the error will decrease further. So, the slope again, it always does this. The slope goes on reducing and asymptotically, it will reach steady state. Okay. This is fine. So, from any initial condition, if you consider this, it will eventually reach steady state. 
okay. Yeah, I mean the correct steady state of 4 volts and you can see the error between the actual and the desired is going down with time, okay. Any other questions? I thought somebody else raised their hand here. So, every circuit element will dissipate power, although I call transistor an active element, it is not, even that will dissipate power. What happens is, I mean that is little hard to explain without going into the details of the device, details of the uh, nonlinearity. When we say an active device, uh, it is not quite relevant to this particular course. What happens is, first of all, every device needs some power supply, I will show it like this, okay. I mean none of your electronic gadgetry works without power supplies, okay. Now no active device by itself generates power, that is not possible, okay. The only thing that generates power is the battery. So what is meant by an active device is, this will be dissipating power, okay. And let us say you feed in some power, this is the input and this is the output and it will you have a load, it will give out some power, okay. So what happens is if you increase this by some amount, the output power will increase by a larger amount that is what happens in an active device, but it will be actually drawing a substantial amount of power from the power supply and it will still be dissipating power. So every element will dissipate power, one of the goals of any circuit designer is to reduce it as much as possible, but you can't reduce it to zero. Okay, there are some fundamental reasons why you can't make any useful circuit with zero power. Okay. I mean, in this particular case, I think you are asking: Can is there some other way of making an attenuator uh, which doesn't consume power? First of all, you go on increasing R, it will consume less and less power. So for now, I think that is sufficient. So if you use R of uh, one ohm, then it will consume maybe good fraction of an ampere, but if you have make R equal to a mega ohm, then it will consume good fraction of a micro ampere. So, that is the way to reduce power, okay, but you cannot make it 0. Any other questions? Okay. So, our negative feedback amplifier looks like this, we have filled in some details of this. We will come back to this one, but in the immediate future we will not be concerned with how exactly the output changes with time. I just showed you now, right. So, for instance here. I showed you if you start from different values how it changes with time and so on, okay. So, we will uh, derive what we need for the system, but for the moment we will be interested only in the steady state values, okay. Now you can uh, make some simplifications while evaluating only the steady state value. Yeah, I think you must have attempted the tutorial with RC circuits, right. I mean how did you evaluate the steady state values there? What did you do? I think one of the questions was like what happens at t equal to infinity? How do you calculate? Yeah, so one way is I mean you evaluate the exact expression and then take the limit t tends to infinity, but that is a kind of dumb way of doing it, right? Because you will not be able to, uh, I mean this is just doing extra work for no reason. You have to realize that in steady state with DC inputs, capacitor draws no current, so that means you can open it and inductor has no voltage across it, so you can short circuit it. So, that is how you do that. So, that is how we will eventually get there. So, for evaluating the steady state, we will have some simpler circuits, but first we will go through the business of how to implement an integrator again with the abstract uh, current uh, abstract control sources that we have, okay. So, what is it that we have to integrate? We have to integrate this voltage V i or the difference between V i and V naught by k. 
Now, among the circuit elements that you know, which are the ones that implement an integration? Capacitor and resistor. What does the resistor integrate? Huh? No, no, I mean you know the element relations of uh, several elements, right? So, which is the one that includes integration? Capacitor and inductor, okay. Resistance is has no time dependence, right? V equals I R. So, the current depends only on the instantaneous value of the voltage, it does not depend on the past, okay. Integration obviously has to have history. Integrator means that its output depends not only on what happened, what is happening right now, but also what happened before, okay. So, what does the capacitor integrate? What does it integrate? Current. So, the element relationship is that the capacitor current is the capacitance times the time derivative of the voltage. If you invert it, you will have V c to be 1 over c, the integral of the current. Okay. So, if you have to implement an integrator, you have to use a capacitor and similarly, if you have this, then the inductor current is the integral of its voltage. Okay. I think these things you must have studied in electrical circuits, basic electrical circuits, right. So, the capacitor voltage is the state of the capacitor and how does it uh, acquire that voltage? It depends on the current that flowed through it in the past, okay. It integrates all of that current. Essentially, integral of the current is basically charge that sits on the plates of the capacitor and gives rise to the voltage. And similarly, in case of, uh, in case of uh, an inductor, you have the voltage across the inductor and the state of the inductor is basically the current and it is related to the flux linkage through the inductor, right. Is this fine? Now, it turns out that inductors are bulky in practice and you would like to avoid them as much as possible, okay. So, typically you see that as far as possible you try to make things with capacitors. Sometimes when we cannot avoid it, we use inductors, okay. So, we will make our integrator using capacitors. Now, how do we do this? Right now, the capacitor by itself, if you apply a current, the voltage will be the integral of the current, okay. This is not what I want. I want to apply an error voltage and the output voltage should be the integral of the error voltage. So, what other component do I need to complete this? I want to integrate a voltage and get a voltage. I do not want to integrate a current and get a voltage. So, what should I use? Voltage control? Resistor. How will a resistor work? I heard something about voltage control something. What? Voltage control current source. So, if I have a voltage V e, I convert it to a current. Okay. So, let us say this is V e and this current is some g m times V e. Okay. So, now if I hang a capacitor C at the output, what will be this voltage V naught? Right? I mean it integrates a current, this is actually I mean there is nothing profound here, right. Capacitor integrates a current to give you a voltage. I have a voltage input. So, I first I have to convert it to current and push it into a capacitor and then that will give me the integral. So, how do I convert a voltage to a current? A voltage control current source, that is all, okay. Is this fine? Yeah, yeah. So, this is not complete yet, okay. G m will vary with temperature and that is okay. What we want is 
we do not particularly care for the relationship between this one and that one. What we want is the relationship between V i and V naught to be as stable as possible and we will see that is what will happen. Okay. And actually you kind of saw that right. For instance, let us say this k is 4 okay, and V i is 1 volt, what will be the output voltage in steady state? k is 4 and V i is 1 volt, what will be the output voltage in steady state? How does it depend on the value of omega u? Does it depend on it? No, omega u only influences how fast, maybe if you are uh, initially if the output is different from 4 volts, the initial slope will be determined by omega u, the steady state is not. So, the fact that this omega u may be changing does not really affect your steady state solution. Okay. So, that is the beauty of negative feedback. So, if you do manage to implement an integrator, it does not matter what the proportionality constant is. The proportionality constant does have some effect, it influences how fast it reaches steady state, but not what the steady state is. Okay. And that also is important the speed, but we will come to that later. What changes? If it okay, let us not get into the detail, the analysis may be difficult, but if this block behaves like an integrator, the only way it will reach steady state is if this is 0, right. It does not matter what gm is, right. If the input is 0, the output will be a constant. So, in that case, eventually it will reach 0, and then you can see that this will be 1 volt, so this has to be 4 volts. Okay. So, it is not sensitive to that value. What it will do is, I mean, if uh, all these changes are happening, perhaps it will take a longer time to reach that steady state, etcetera. But for now, we are not concerned with those things. Okay. <coughs> so, what is it that we need? Vi and we wanted an integrator I assume all of you are familiar with this notation ground right I mean we have a common node in the circuit to which we refer all the voltages and we do not show the connections explicitly simply to reduce the complexity in the figure that is all. So, what is it that I wanted to integrate the difference between So, I will say this is g m times v e, where v e is simply the difference between these two voltages, right. Okay. So, here I have v naught by k and I wanted to make an integrator. So, sorry I think I drew the arrow in the wrong direction and I have c over here. Does this work? Yeah, that is actually a very important thing. So, initially we assumed that G m V e is flowing through the capacitor. Now, we connected something else. So, part of the current goes into that. Okay. So, that is a very good point. So, now we made an integrator, but we kind of destroyed it by connecting the voltage divider to it. Okay. So, not all of this current in the control source goes into the capacitor. So, that is a problem. Okay. Now, we can assume that r is very large and so on. So, very little current flows. We will get to that later, but how do we fix this situation? First of all, do you understand the problem? I mean, if you have this g m v e and c, this is an integrator. Okay. If I have this, what happens? Is it an integrator? What will happen? I mean, tell me what happens in the circuit. Hmm? So, integrator means that if I apply a constant voltage here, the output should go on ramping up. What will happen in this particular circuit? You have done all these RC tutorials, right? So, huh? 
Yeah, yeah. So, what will it look like? Why? RC is fine, but I mean, can you intuitively tell me what is happening? The capacitor? No, I know. Why? So, initially, let us say the capacitor voltage is 0. Okay. So, where does this current flow? All of it flows through the capacitor, because if it is 0, there is no current through the resistor. But as soon as the capacitor voltage builds up to some value, it will leak some current. Okay. So, a less current goes through the capacitor. So, what happens is the slope becomes a little smaller okay. and then the voltage builds up a little more, it leaks more current, the slope becomes even smaller and this phenomenon is the exponential. right? This is what gives you the exponential. As you go on, as the output goes on increasing, the slope goes on getting smaller and smaller and it eventually reaches a steady state. What will be the output steady state? That is you can find by, I mean that you can find by open circuiting the capacitor. right? So, it is GMR times the input voltage. Okay. So, we will fix this using control sources we can do that. So, how we do that is I will show you the solution after that we can come back to some more details of the control sources. So, the way to do that is the following essentially this current should not be drawn from G m, but this voltage should be the same as the voltage of the integrator. So, can you suggest a solution? It is a voltage control voltage source. You make an integrator and then you also use a voltage control voltage source. Let me call this V O 1. This will also be V O 1, it is exactly the same, except that this is a voltage source. And what happens to the voltage of a voltage source if you connect resistors to it? Huh? Does not change. Okay. The voltage source by definition maintains a given voltage regardless of how much current is flowing through it. So, the voltage does not change at all. Okay. So, now does this work? Is this our negative feedback amplifier of gain k or is there some other fine print to be added? Does it work or not? Do we have an integrator? That is uh, what I mean is if V is stuck at a constant, does the output go on increasing indefinitely? Yes or no? It does, right? I mean, after all, again, I think I sorry, I keep doing this. This has to be in that direction. Okay. So, if V is a constant, let us say 1 volt, this will push a constant current and the output voltage will go on ramping up indefinitely okay. and this the voltage here will be exactly the same as voltage here. The only role of this is to isolate this load from this node. Okay. So, that is why such a thing is called a buffer. Okay. It is actually not changing the output in any way, only thing it is doing is making sure that the load does not disturb this. Okay. So, that is what is called a buffer. So, this works and essentially a lot of uh, uh, effort goes into making this block using transistors. Like I said, we will not deal with the transistor level details here, but with the control source details and there are enough things to worry about even there. Okay. So, we will go to that. So, now this brings us to some other like non ideal features of uh, control sources, which we will discuss tomorrow. Okay. So, just to set the background, we have the ideal voltage and the current source. Okay. Have you heard of any non ideal features that always come with it? If you have a voltage source, the characteristic on the IV plane is a vertical line. What does the actual, I mean, a real current, a real voltage source, a battery look like? Huh? it will have some series resistance. 
Okay. Similarly, if you have a current source, what uh, what do you actually get? You will have a parallel resistance. So, similarly, similar things will happen to the control sources. We will see the effects of that more. 